All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Action and Inertia, a research podcast where each episode we invite our guests to share their unique and valuable perspectives about human behavior in response to change. Today, we are very honored to have with us Joe. Uh, Joe, can you introduce yourself? Let us know what you're passionate about uh, and where your subject matter expertise lies. Hello, I'm Joe Singleton. I'm the CEO of uh, Business Bears uh, Singleton Technologies, and we do custom websites and applications to help improve processes or automate processes and improve overhead costs. We are your A to Z one stop shop, all your digital advertisements and from blogs to websites to social media to Google ads, just about anything and everything you can know. What I'm passionate about is improving processes. I measure my success by the amount of money that I can save clients and improve upon processes they thought were, um, were already efficient, but when we can make it even more efficient, I just, it gives me a, a just that sense of yayness. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of makes me giddy, like yeah, I improved something, you know, <laughs> and it just, um, just makes me feel complete that I made a good, positive change in the world. I love that. Um, thank you so much. Thanks again for being here. Um, just want to remind everybody the goals of the podcast are twofold. First, we want to inspire at least one person to actively lean into change. Um, And secondly, we want to uh, gather all of these conversations, all this insight, um, and create a database uh, of conversations and information that um, folks who are experiencing change can lean into. All right, so without any further ado, we'll jump right into the questions. So question number one, Joe, is uh, in the face of change, what motivates a person to choose action and or inertia? So... Motivate somebody to make a change is kind of like what we do. Uh, first, you have to understand that there is something that does need to be changed or improved upon, and recognizing that is step one, um, and that's probably the most difficult step. You have to recognize there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Um, now, the reason why people choose to make a change or do the inertia is either lack of knowledge on how to uh, approach the ch- um, change or how to make it better, or they lack the resources to make the change possible. Um, and people who do are or are able to have um, at least a portion of either one of those to at least start making that change. Cool, cool. So, uh, so kind of information and resources. I love that. Um, I think I know with me and some of these conversations, sometimes we forget uh, to highlight. I think that's really important that you bring that up. That um, resources are like a really, really important. Uh, aspect of like successfully moving towards change or even feeling like empowered to uh, do that or being empowered because if you have the lack of resources you know you may just have to uh, figure something else out so um leading right into the second question then uh which choice action or inertia in response to change do you see as um most beneficial to uh like holistic wellness when you're looking at your life in terms of um, your life being like a, a whole system, right? Um, so you, you kind of like touch on that in your introduction, like, you know, improving systems. So I guess from, to use your language, like which choice do you think like lends itself to like improving your life system? Well, to improve, you definitely have to make change. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, you have to tell, uh, <laughs> constantly make change to improve. Um, it's, I know people always say perfect practice makes perfect, but it's not a completely true statement. It's perfect practice makes improvement. Um, in order to prove, you have to do it correctly. But when it comes to 
when the rubber meets the road, it's not always going to be executed perfectly because there are too many variables at play. Mm -hmm. I mean, a kicker can practice punting a ball, but what if he's indoors versus an open air stadium? Mm -hmm. And then what if the wind's blowing from the West or from the East? Maybe it's five miles an hour. Maybe it's 5.5 miles an hour. You know, mm -hmm. there's always variations or the ball pressure, you know, so there's always something that is different. But if you practice the technique of kicking, you're going to improve upon the uh, situation. And then when the time comes, you'll be able to execute, hopefully, the way you want it to go between the uprights, right? Um, and so it's hard to say you're going to improve without changing something. Um, that's a, I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> no, that's, don't be sorry. That's, that's a very valid yeah. point. <laughs> Yeah, you can't improve awesome. without change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that you said that because um, I think like, you know, a part of this, right? So I just reiterated the, the first goal of the show is to actively, uh, to, to inspire somebody to actively lean into change. And I talk about, um, you know, there's a lot of conversation around like fear sometimes um, with change. You talked about like lack of resources or uh, lack of information, right? But I just like personally believe that um, you kind of like uh, made a point that really hit home in that um, I think we're empowered by like practicing small incremental change, right? So like to your point with like the kicker, like you don't know what's gonna happen like on game day, but you can control what's gonna happen like every time you go to practice, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? Um, and in terms of even like not having resources um, or information, I think it's so important to uh, imagine um, what, you're, what you need to do or, or make that kind of like mental practice so that even if you, I think like even if you're a kicker and you, for whatever reason, let's say you're injured and you can't go to the field or the stadium to practice, you can still kind of like, do some things right you can still lean into action you can watch you know other people kicking that kind of like wires your brain and it'll help you feel more empowered um you can just run it through your mind i think there's so yes. much um uh power in just kind of like running something through your mind i think i don't want to say in all cases but i think like often um that is is more powerful than even like the physical acts uh, of what you're gonna do, which I think is so important when you talk about like lack of resources or information. I think there's always something you can do um, to lean in that direction, right? Like to exactly. your point, even if you can't do the whole thing, there's like some step you can take, right? Exactly. I mean, that's why professional athletes watch game film. You know, like okay, we made a mistake here. Next time, let's think about doing something a little bit different, you know, so the small incremental changes to improve. Yeah, yeah. And that empowerment, I think, from all those small things is really important because you don't feel that, like, pressure when it's just like, oh, I got to watch a video today, right? Like, nobody's around. There's no, like, audience. There's no coach. There's no pressure. But I think the value of the practice, to use your own word, is still there. It's still, like, so great, you know? Um, so I love that. And so the last question is, um, what traits exist in folks who consistently choose action? We kind of started getting into that a little bit uh, with like practicing. So what do you think about that? What traits exist in folks who consistently choose action? So those who consistently choose action are those who um, understand that in order to make those changes, something has to be done and they have the 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 self-motivation mm -hmm. to do it and to say take the lead um so like for instance i run a small business and if employees ask hey why don't we do this this and this i think it'll be better as a ceo as a, of a small business i'm going to say well you know what how about you ask that question again and start off with who's going to do it but now <laughs> look in a mirror <laughs> because that is a great idea <laughs> you know so more than likely it's going to be the person who asked the question uh, yeah. so yeah. Uh, and I think that's also another 
aspects that people um, lack is that uh, either they have an external force prohibiting them or not giving them the opportunity to make that change. You know, mm -hmm. they're not being empowered to make that change. Um, so uh, to answer your question, I think it's that self-motivation, um, the knowledge that they need, of course, the resources and the ability um, or the empowerment to be able to make that change. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, and and you're right, ability uh, is, is not so limited. I think probably immediately, you know, somebody says ability and you think like, uh, to like act on the actual change itself. But I think like overall the theme of our conversation really is like those incremental things that build up to that and how that still counts. Um, and not, e not even just still counts, but it's so valuable, right? It's kind of like that thing where like um, people talk about you see somebody succeed and like, it just seems like one day they just woke up and like invented this thing or like, you know, whatever it is, started a company or like won a prize. And it's like, man, that has been a work in progress. Uh, probably, you know, and even in my own experience, I think often it's a work in progress before I've been realized it's a work in progress. Yeah. It's like, sometimes you're working on stuff and then you get to something, you're like, oh, wow. You know, like all these other things I did, chose to do, chose to take action on really lends itself to like this moment um, and, and feeling prepared when you talk about uh, resources, I think preparedness is definitely one of them. Like really feeling prepared and empowered to like take that step when you get there. So exactly. totally agree, yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes before you see the live event. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Always. Like I, I, yes. I would argue there's no exception to that. Like, yeah, exactly. like nobody just shows up uh, and is just like, boom, change, rocked it. Like had no idea what it's going to do today. At the, right. There's always some preparation. So anyways, thank you so much for being here. This has been a really great conversation. Um, and yeah, I hope somebody watching and listening today feels empowered to like practice and, you know, lean into those small incremental and consistent actions that will build to something bigger so thank you so much joe for being thank here you. appreciate you um for folks out there watching thank you again for being here for another episode if you like the the show uh and you would like to contribute to this research please um share this uh podcast like subscribe um send us an email at action at gmail.com let us know if you want to be on the show or if you have anybody that you would recommend and until next time 